Assalamualaikum and hi hi hello and salam ramadan from Madam Kim to all of you. It has been quite some time since teacher come up with a new video. So today, teacher want to share with all of you biology KSSM from 5, chapter 1, organization of plant tissue and growth for the subtopic 1.1, organization of plant tissues. Before we start our topic, click on teacher subscribe button and like the video. Okay, now we look at the organization of plant tissues. Now, plant tissues can be divided into two big groups, which are meristematic tissue and permanent tissues. Meristematic tissues can further be divided into apical meristematic tissues and lateral meristematic tissues. Whereas permanent tissues can be divided into three types of tissue which are epidermal tissue, ground tissue, vascular tissues. Ground tissues can further be divided into three types which are parenchyma tissues, colonchyma tissues and sclerenchyma tissues. Vascular tissues can be divided into xylem tissues and phloem tissues. So for today's video, teachers are going to concentrate on the ground tissues and vascular tissues. Okay everyone, let us look at the ground tissue first. Right, this is the overview first. Okay, the first one is parenchyma tissue which we can found in potato. As you can see the cells, uh, there are spaces in between the cells and the cell wall seems quite thin. And then we have colonchyma tissues, the cell wall is becoming thicker but it is uneven. Uh, the example given here is the salary and then the last one is sclerenchyma tissue where you can find it in pear but this one as you can see the cell wall is the thickest among the three types of ground tissue okay now we want to look at the each ground tissue individually the first one is parenchyma tissue. So this parenchyma tissue consists of living cells. They are actually not yet differentiated. The cell wall, as teacher mentioned to you in the previous slide, it is the thinnest among the three types of uh, ground tissue. The substance that made up the cell wall is only cellulose. And then the vacuum is large in size. Now, the function for parenchyma tissue, the first one, it is as a storage of starch. As you see just now, you can find it in potato, right? And the second one, uh, the parenchyma tissue can provide turgidity support for herbaceous plant. That is why the vacuole is large in size. The third one, the parenchyma tissue is involved in photosynthesis and it also involved in the cases exchange. The next ground tissue type that we are going into is colonchyma tissues. This colonchyma tissue also consists of living cells. The cell wall are irregular in shape it is thicker than parenchyma just now, but thinner than sclerenchyma. The substance that made up the cell wall is pectin and hemicellulose. And it also has vacuole. The functions for colonchyma tissue is to provide mechanical support and to give elasticity to plants.
Okay, now we are going into the last type of ground tissue which is sclerenchyma. This one, the type of cell is dead cell, unlike parenchyma and colenchyma just now. The cell wall is the thickest among the three and the substance that made up cell wall is lignin. So it is lignified cell wall. That is why you can see the cell wall is thick due to the presence of lignin. The vacuole mostly are absent because these are dead cells. The function for the sclerenchyma tissues, it provides support and mechanical strength to the matured plants. Now, let us review back the three types of ground tissue. The first one is parenchyma, the second one is colenchyma, and the third one is sclerenchyma. Okay, now let us try one question based on the topic that teacher has shared with you all just now. Now, compare tissue A and tissue B. Now, if we look at the picture, we can see that the wall, the cell wall of tissue A is very thin. And then, for tissue B, it's thick and it is even. So, we can guess that tissue A is parenchyma tissue, whereas tissue B is sclerenchyma tissue because colenchyma tissue, the cell wall is uneven. Okay, for the comparison, we should have similarities. So, for the similarities, both are ground tissues and both provide support to the plant. For the differences, tissue A is parenchyma tissue, tissue B is parenchyma tissue. Tissue A consists of living cells, tissue B consists of dead cells. Tissue A is the thinnest, has the thinnest cell wall, whereas tissue B has the thickest cell wall. Tissue A cell wall is made up of cellulose. Whereas tissue B, the cell wall has lignin or it is lignified. Okay students, we have covered all the three types of ground tissue. Now we are going into vascular tissue which are xylem tissue and phloem tissues. Okay, now we look at the xylem tissue. First one is about the function of xylem. Look at the nodes on the right side of the slide. Xylem function is to transport water and mineral salts from roots to leaves, meaning it is only one way. Now, xylem tissues consist of two conducting cells. Now, look at on your left side, which are xylem vessel and tracheids. Now, xylem vessel consists of that cell to maximize transport of water and mineral salts. The cells are arranged vertically from end to end to form continuous vessel. It is like a continuous hollow tube because it contains that cell. Then the cell wall of the xylem vessel is thickened by lignin. This is to prevent the xylem vessel from collapse due to the pressure given by the movement of water. Besides that, the, thicken, uh, the thickening of the cell wall by lignin is, can also provide mechanical support to the plant. Then, xylem tissues also have tracheids. The characteristic of tracheids is it has pits 
This is to allow water and mineral salts to be transported laterally, laterally meaning to the to your left or to the right side in plant. Okay, the last tissue that we are going to see today is phloem tissue. Now, the function for phloem tissue is to transport organic substances such as sucrose, amino acid, plant hormones to be transported from leaves to all parts of the plant. Okay, if you look at the diagram on your right, you can see the arrow are up and down, meaning this type of transportation can occur both ways unlike the transportation in the xylem just now. Now, flow can be divided into two that are sieve tube and companion cell. Now, the sieve tube, even though it is a living cell, but it does not have nuclei, it does not have ribosome, it does not have vacuole. This is to allow the organic substances to be transported easily along the tube. And then the sieve tube also has perforated plate that is known as sieve plate. If you look at the diagram, you can see yang lubang-lubang-lubang tu, uh, macam penapis tu, that is the sieve plate. Yeah? This is to allow organic materials to be transported from one cell going into another cell. And then companion cell, Compan companion cell tu, cell yang di sebelah. Uh, menjadi kawan companion kan So this companion cell Has a bundle of mitochondria A lot of mitochondria This is to provide energy In the form of ATP Why? Because the transport of sucrose Or the, tra uh, the transport of organic substances uh, In the flow Is using active transport Okay, this one is the overall view of xylem and phloem in a plant so that you can see where actually is the position of this xylem and phloem. So, on your left side, you can see that the phloem tissue uh, conducting water and mineral salts from the root going upwards to the leaf one way. Whereas for the phloem, it goes both ways. Uh, so, it transports organic substances from the leaf to all parts of the plant. It can be the flower, it can be the root, it can be the stem and so on. Now, if we uh, make a longitudinal uh, section, cross section of the uh, stem, you can see that the position of the phloem is at the outer side of the stem and the xylem is at the inner side of the stem. And in between of xylem and phloem, there is actually a cambium um, cells or cambium tissues. Now let us try one more question before we end our video. Now explain how structure of xylem adapted to its function. So for this one, you have to uh, to mention the uh, adaptation in xylem and then why it is adapted that way. Okay, the first one, xylem consists of dead cell. That is the adapted structure in xylem. Why? This is to transport water and mineral salts easily or to maximize the transportation of water and mineral salts. And then xylem vessels uh, are elongated, hollow and connected to each other. Why? This is to form a continuous vessel from root to the leaf so that there is the teputus putus yeah? uh, for the transportation of water and mineral salts and the last one there is uh, the structure the adapted structure is the cell wall of the xylem is taken by lignin why this is to provide 
uh, or to prevent xylem vessel from collapse due to the pressure changes when water flow through the xylem. Okay, that's all for today's video. Hopefully, this video helps you to understand the topic of crown tissues and vascular tissue better. Untuk student teacher, don't forget to complete your activity book and your notebook. Lastly, jangan lupa subscribe channel YouTube teacher. Bless Ramadan to all. Bye-bye.